There's also the methodology used by Morris and other young earth creationists that is rejected. Um, as Morris has said in this quote as well as many others, the word of God must take first priority and secondly, the observed facts of science. Now think about that. That means that when you go out and you look at nature, you have to look at it through a filter, in this case a biblical filter, so that um, you come up with the right decision, so that you come up with the right observation. That's no way to do science. You have to go where the data leads you. You can't run it through a filter. I have just come back from a conference in Alexandria, Egypt, where I heard a number of Muslim scholars basically doing the same thing, except theirs is a Quranic filter. Before they could talk about science, they had to find a passage in the Quran that justified their dealing with that particular area. Not a good way to do science, if I do say so myself. Old Earth creationists is another kind of um, creationists, they're special creationists, but old earth creationists don't believe that the earth is only six to 10,000 years old. They accept an earth of millions or billions of years. Most of these are, um, uh, well, there, are there are a variety of, of kinds of old earth creationists. Day age creationists believe that each day of Genesis, the six days of Genesis, are actually very long periods of time because in the um, Gospel of John, John says that to God a day is like a thousand years. So seizing on that passage, some Christians will reinterpret the Bible to indicate that uh, the, it really is an ancient earth. The data from physics and chemistry and geology is actually accurate and it's okay, but still special creation occurred of the kinds of organisms. Gap creationism is a less popular kind of creationism, an older variety. In gap creationists, there is considered to be a special creation in Genesis 1, and that a very, very long period of time, then God destroys that creation and creates a second creation, which is the Adam and Eve creation in Genesis 2. There also is progressive creationism, which I mentioned briefly before, the idea that God creates sequentially through time. And this is, again, a special creationist view because God is creating things in their present form. Things do not have common ancestors in any of these views. Continuous creationism is sort of a modification of that, where God is sort of getting in and tinkering with the DNA and causing the tree of life to, um, to develop in various ways. So there's a lot of ways that old earth creationists are trying to make the uh, Bible accord with modern science, uh, keeping as much of the Bible as they can, but obviously they have to reject a fair amount of modern science. Now, people always say, well, where do the intelligent design people fit? Well, intelligent design really straddles young earthers and old earthers because intelligent design claims to be agnostic about the age of the earth. Some of them are old earthers, some of them are young earthers, but the leaders of the intelligent design movement at, say, the Discovery Institute or the Idea Clubs and so forth, these people do not accept common ancestry. They believe that God specially created things like the bacteria flagella, or the blood clotting cascade, or the vertebrate eye. Theistic evolution is next along the continuum. Now, if you went to Catholic school, this is what you learned. Uh, Catholics accept that evolution happened, and they believe that it was the way God chose to bring about the earth. In the Catholic view, um, there has to be room for God to insert the soul, but hey, it's no big deal if the human body evolved from more primitive animal forms. People keep sending me theistic evolution cartoons, which I think is quite nice. I do enjoy them, so keep up the good work. Um, in this cartoon, um, God is saying, I'm tired of making decisions, let's just go with natural selection. And for the physicists, you made it all out of quarks, get out of here. <laughs> And I have to, I have to um, uh, give a shout out to my anthropology uh, friends here. Instead of using, instead of starting from scratch, why don't we just use modified chip DNA? <laughs> Materialists are the last on the continuum. Now notice that this is not a scientific continuum. This is a continuum of religion and philosophy. Everybody north, so to speak, of the materialists are theists. These are all people who believe in God. The materialists do not believe in God. Now I want to take a little, a little time on this because the word materialism or naturalism uh, is a very confusing one to many people. Let me tell you a little bit about what I think about science. 
I look at science as a limited way of knowing. This comes as a, as, a, as a jarring thing to most people. A scientist thinks science is limited? Yeah. Science is limited in two ways. Number one, we're limited to trying to explain the natural world. If there is a supernatural world, we can't explain it through science. Number two, we're limited to using only natural processes. And the reason for that is because natural or material matter and energy processes are the only kind we can test. Think a little bit about what science is. Science is a way of knowing about the natural world that involves coming up with explanations for a phenomenon in the natural world and then going out and testing that explanation. And if you can't disprove it, hanging on to it for a little longer, you go out and you test it again. And after you've tested it a lot of times, if you still can't disprove it, then you tentatively accept it as a good explanation. But somebody else can come along and test it and prove you wrong, and that's fine too, because that's what... But science is all about testing. Now, how do you test something? How do you test a scientific idea? How do you test any idea? Well, to test something, you've got to hold constant certain variables, right? Remember in seventh grade, you learned about control, you know, scientific control. If you want to know whether the fertilizer makes the corn grow, you have to water the corn the same amount. You can't just water that one with the fertilizer, right? That doesn't work. You have to control for the amount of water. So what are the kinds of things that you can control? Well, you sure as heck can't control God, right? So scientists don't use God as a scientific explanation, whether they are believers or not believers. They don't use God in science because God is unconstrained. We can't put God in a test tube or keep them out of one for all of that. Because God is unconstrained, we can't control God. We just have to set God aside when we're doing science. So that's why I say science is limited to explaining the natural world using natural causes. Now, using natural causes, this limitation of being just stuck with natural causes, is not because all scientists are atheists, because they're not, but it's because those are the only kinds of causes we can test. Now, the word materialism or naturalism is used in this sense of methodological materialism, restricting yourself to natural cause. But then there's the kind of materialism that I showed you on the continuum, which is a philosophical materialism. This is the idea that there is no God. There is no, no gods, no ancestor spirits, no supernatural at all, that the only thing, uh, the only phenomena composing the universe is matter and energy and their interactions, the physicists will tell us. That's philosophical materialism. And it's a respectable philosophical view, um, but it's not the same thing as methodological naturalism. Science is a methodologically naturalistic way of knowing. It is not a philosophically naturalistic way of knowing. There's a big difference between them. And I'm saying this as a materialist. <coughs> Sometimes you will find scientists who in their um, uh, books or writings, will claim that science gives warrant for their point of view. So Richard Dawkins will say that science gives warrant for atheism. Francis Collins will say that science gives warrant for theism. And as far as I'm concerned, that's fine. It's fine for Richard Dawkins to say science supports his point of view. It's fine for Francis Collins to say science supports his point of view. Where I think the followers of these men go over the line, is if they say that science requires this particular conclusion. I think we need to just drop a barrier in between science as a really useful way of knowing based upon natural causes, which is hugely helpful for helping us understand the natural world, and whatever theistic or non-theistic inspiration we might get from it. And I think if we did that, we'd have a lot fewer problems with the creation and evolution issue. Okay, so we're back. I did not mention Darwin in my, um, in my title, didn't I? Um, why all the fuss about evolution? In my opinion, evolution is controversial because of these religious views. Um, 
Charles Darwin, of course, when he wrote on the origin of species, had two big ideas. One, that common ancestry had occurred, evolution had occurred, and that the mechanism of natural selection was the main engine bringing it about. There are some serious implications of both of these ideas for Christians. <clears throat> the idea that evolution happened has real consequences if you interpret the Bible literally. In fact, common ancestry is not compatible with a literal interpretation of the Bible. But as we have seen from the continuum, that's not the only interpretation that Christians have used over the years. That natural selection explains evolution challenges the idea of design or the direct hand of God being involved in producing complex things. If many Christians believe that if you move God back from that direct action, God doesn't directly design the vertebrate eye, the vertebrate eye evolves over through the process of natural selection. Many Christians believe that if you pull God back from that direct action, God then becomes less personal. Now these components are slightly different for conservative Christians versus mainstream Christians. Conservative Christians are obviously going to be concerned about the special creationist incompatibility with um, evolution. Biblical literalism is not compatible with evolution. They are concerned about the loss of the personal God and also a theological term I haven't mentioned yet called theodicy. Now theodicy is a theological term referring to the problem of evil. Most Christians believe that God is all wise, all powerful, and all good. There is a problem. You can kind of take any two of these at once, but you kind of take, can't take all three together because there's a logical contradiction. When you look at the fact that there is so much pain and suffering and death and disease and hardship on the planet, not just for humans, but for animals as well. Conservative Christians get out of the theodicy problem because they blame it all on Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve sinned, therefore death and destruction and disease, etc., came into the world. God gets off the hook. Mainstream Christians who are not biblical literalists don't have that option, and so they have to wrestle with this problem. Well, how do you explain evil if God is all good and all knowing? If God knows bad things are going to happen and he's powerful enough to do something about it, why does he let bad things happen? Now, believe me, the theodicy problem didn't start with Charles Darwin. Okay. You go back to Aquinas, you go back to Augustine, you go back to the early church leaders. For 2,000 years, Christians have wrestled with the problem of evil, with the problem of theodicy, how to take this, these three characteristics of God and have them make sense. But evolution exacerbates it. Because if God created through the process of natural selection, if he brought this wonderful diversity of living things um, through the process of natural selection, yuck, natural selection is this really nasty, brutish, and short kind of way of doing stuff. Um, sometimes if I have a lot of biologists in the audience, I'll say, how many of you would vote for, for Lamarckism over natural selection? They all laugh and raise their hands because Lamarckism is so much more benign than natural selection or you know, getting stuff done. But unfortunately, we can't vote the way the world works, uh, even if the intelligent design thinks, we, if people think we can. So we have to just, you know, we have to deal with the fact that natural selection is how the world works. And this does create problems for mainstream as well as, as a conservative. 